So basically the name derived from the hot cross buns, which are traditionally eaten on Good Friday, it's um, basically the radiological findings of cruciform shape hyperintensity in the ponds, which we can usually see on HCLT2 um, images and very occasionally or on the flare MRI images. So the mechanism, the pathogenic mechanism of the appearance is most likely postulated like selective loss or gliosis of myelinated transverse pontocerebellar fibers. And also there could be the neuronal loss in the pontine web and the preservation of pontine tegmentum around here or either superior ventral cerebellar pedendals and possible sparing of the binatural corticus binatress, which is causing this kind of uh, cross-shaped pattern in the ponds. So the previous studies postulated that a, there are different grades of the <coughs> hot cross band sign. Grade one, usually, if you can see here, I'm not entirely sure whether you can see clearly or not, uh, there is the slight appearance of vertical line here as a you know, feature. And the grade two, there is more emergence of the vertical line. And in grade three, uh, there is appearance of horizontal line here. As a grade four, there is more prominent features of vertical line as well as horizontal line. And grade five, that would be the event stage where together with these, you know, like in significant appearance of cross-shaped side, there could be associated fontine entropy as well. So previously it was classically known to be specific for MSA cerebellar type, but a recent cohort studies as well as systematic literature reviews that there could be association with other neurological conditions as well. That includes a metabolic condition such as cerebral transgenic mitosis, could be related to inflammation. There have been few case reports associated with hot cross band signs, could be related to multiple sclerosis, could be related to NBO. Most commonly, it's associated with MSA, which we already know. Sometimes it could be related to uh, neoplasm as part of paraneoplastic syndrome. There have been few case reports associated with. Uh, testicular tumor, breast tumor, or in um, leptomeningia carcinomatosis, or as well as associated with lung cancer as well. That could also be associated with some infections. For example, uh, there have been few case reports associated with PML, secondary to HIV infections, could be related to hereditary causes. Again, this is more common than other a metabolic cause or neoplasm cause. And so there could be association with um, spinal cerebellar ataxia. There has been one case report associated with phenotype toxicity that shows hot cross band signs. Very rarely could be related to vascular causes such as vasculitis or a pontine infarct. So clinical significance of hot cross band signs in different conditions. Uh, previously, it was thought to be pathognomic features of MS cerebellar type, but because of all these recent studies and case reports, they think it's any cause of quadrocerebellar degeneration can cause a sign. Uh, it can be useful in many reasons. Uh, for example, um, it can be used as a tool to see if there is any severity of the disease conditions or if there is any progression of the disease. For example, like it can be useful in MSA cerebellar type, especially if the disease is getting progress, we can see more prominent cruciform pattern on the MRI brain. It can also be used as a marker for the treatment response, especially um, in immunotherapy uh, response, especially in the inflammatory conditions, such as neuromyelitis optica. Then in that situations, if there's any response to the treatment, obviously we can see that there is a reduction of the appearance or total disappearance of the signal, which can postulate different pathogenic mechanisms, for example, the appearance of the hot cross band sign would be secondary to demyelination of the specific transverse photocerebellar fibers rather than uh, the gliosis of the, uh, the, the, the nerve tissues. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah.